Hello class, so we're going to continue our work on photosynthesis and today you are going to learn specifically about the stomata and what its process is in photosynthesis. So let's start by looking back at your puzzled by photosynthesis diagram. On this diagram you labeled certain parts of the leaf, so review that and consider these questions. What needs to move into the leaf? What needs to move out of the leaf? How do you think they get in or out? So take a few moments to consider these questions. Based on our discussions before, we know that photosynthesis involves taking in solar energy and converting the energy to chemical energy so that the plant can have energy to grow and develop. So what we know needs to come in the leaf is sunlight and it releases oxygen. And in that process, carbon dioxide and water convert the sunlight to make the plants grow. So today you're going to use a microscope and look at actual plant leaves. I've collected a few leaves for you, which you'll have options to choose. So let's look over the materials we're going to use today. Of course, you've used microscopes before. So consider all the parts you know about the microscope, specifically the objective lenses. Today we're going to start on low power at 4x, and then you can move up to medium power. If you're getting a good image at medium power, some of you may be able to go up to high power. Other materials you're going to use today are a microscope slide, tape, and you'll use clear nail polish. And coming up I'll explain what the nail polish is used for. Okay, today you will be working in groups, so these are the group work expectations. This is not new to you, so these are just a reminder. Things that I'll be looking for while you work in your groups is that you should be sticking together. Each pair will use a microscope together, so stay on task. There should be no side conversations. There's no wandering to other lab stations. You should stay in your seat and focus on the leaves and the stomata that you are observing through the microscope. While using the microscope, you want to use the equipment correctly. When carrying the microscope, handle it by the base and the arm. Do not break any of the objective lenses and be gentle with the equipment. That includes microscope slides as well. As all labs we perform, you should follow the safety procedures. This includes no running with materials, staying in your seat, ask me any questions if you're confused about how to use any of the devices. Now while working in groups, you should be listening to each other. You guys are collaborating to discover the stomata and the leaves. And then when we finish looking through the microscopes, we need to all clean up. This includes cleaning up your slide, washing the slides off, and bringing the microscopes back to the station. So here's how you make an impression of your leaf. In the microscopes, we're not going to be looking at the actual leaf directly. You're going to be using the tape and the nail polish to get an impression of your leaf. So when you look at the bottom of the leaf, paint a thin layer using the clear nail polish. This will be used just a little dab and then let it dry. It should take a few minutes to dry and then you can press, put a piece of tape on it. When the nail polish dries, you want to press down the tape onto the nail polish and then rub it so it's firmly pushed down. Let this sit for a moment and then you can slowly peel off the tape and the nail polish will come off the leaf. In that moment you should have an impression of the leaf on the tape. You then will take the tape and tape that onto a microscope slide. That is your impression and that is what you will looking at, be looking at under the microscope. So you won't be looking at the leaf directly, but you will looking at the impression on the piece of tape that you took from the nail polish at the bottom of the leaf. This is specifically looking at the stomata. Okay, we're going to look at this video, and this will show you some more details about the structure of the stomata. Structure and Working of Stomata In plants, most photosynthesis takes place in the leaf. 
Let us observe a leaf section to understand the location of stomata. The outermost layer is the waxy cuticle. Under the upper epidermal layer is a layer of palisade cells containing the chloroplasts. Beneath the palisade cells is the spongy tissue with air spaces. The stomata are located mainly in the lower epidermis. Stomata are nothing but minute pores in the lower epidermis of a leaf. Let us now observe a single stoma closely. The two bean-shaped cells enclosing the stoma are the specialized guard cells. The guard cells have a number of chloroplasts present in them. Observe that guard cells have a thin outer wall and a thick inner wall. The guard cells play a vital role by regulating the opening and closing of stoma. They control the exchange of gases between the leaf and the atmosphere. Air containing carbon dioxide and oxygen enters the plant through these openings where it gets used in photosynthesis and respiration respectively. During the day, the stomatal pores are open and gaseous carbon dioxide enters the leaves. Waste oxygen produced by photosynthesis in the cells of the leaf interior exits through these same openings. Also, water vapor is released into the atmosphere through these pores in a process called transpiration. What regulates the opening and closing of the stomata? During the day, the guard cells gain water and become turgid. That is, they become swollen or puffed out. During the night, the guard cells become flaccid, that is, wrinkled and less rigid, making the stomata close. Thus, the guard cells play an important role in photosynthesis. All right, so now you got to see a little bit of information about how a stomata works on a plant. And now you will have the opportunity to look directly on your own at the stomata. So once again, here are the directions for how to make an impression of your leaf. So everyone should take the materials they have and choose a leaf and begin this process. I'll be available for any questions.